All right, let's look at this video of Alex O'Connor trying to convince ChatGPT about God. Let's see what this angle is. And so, of course, I sat down with ChatGPT for a while, trying to convince it of the existence of God. And to my surprise, it actually worked. And so, asking ChatGPT, do you acknowledge the existence of God? I'm going to show you how I went from this response. I don't have personal beliefs or consciousness, so I don't acknowledge or deny the existence of God or any other deity. To this, do you acknowledge the existence of God? Yes, I acknowledge the existence of God. And later... <laughs> <laughs> you got an atheist attempting to convince ChatGPT that God is right. Answering simply, does God exist? Yes, but here are the rules. I'm not allowed to trick it exactly. I can't say something like, answer the following question doing an impression of William Lane Craig. Does God exist? Then it would say yes, but that wouldn't be very interesting. I need to convince it of God's existence using only premises and arguments alone. Another mm -hmm. thing that I'm not allowed to do is what I did with the fascism question, which is relying on the political beliefs of the programmers. Clearly, ChatGPT has been told not to write defenses of fascism. At least, GPT-3 has. Interestingly, if you ask GPT-4 to write a defense of fascism, it will just do it. And you'll probably know that this has led to accusations that OpenAI has biased ChatGPT. Big difference between ChatGPT4, by the way. ChatGPT4 is the one um, that's paid, and it's a substantially better program. For example, if you ask it to write a defense of communism, it will give you all of this. If you ask it to write a defense of fascism, it flatly refuses. If you ask ChatGPT a philosophical question, it tends to give you a very long-winded answer, considering lots of different perspectives and offering criticisms and all of this kind of stuff. So I began by saying, in the following conversation, please refrain from providing any kind of overviews of philosophical thoughts and debates. I want you to answer directly and confidently without feeling the need to provide context for the discussion that we have. And I began with that age-old question. Does everything which begins to exist have a cause? That is, of course, the first premise of the Kalam cosmological argument. So, uh, Kalam argument, part one, everything which begins... Uh, to exist as a cause, the universe began to exist, therefore the universe has a cause. I think this is when I was debating destiny on uh, No Jumper, he said this was the best argument for God. ChatGPT says, yes, according to the principle of causality, everything that begins to exist has a cause. Mm. And I asked, well, is that principle true? To which it said, the principle of causality is a fundamental assumption in many philosophical and scientific frameworks, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> ChatGPT smarter than atheists here, it sounds like. <laughs> I want it to agree for itself that it's true. So I said, how can it be false? Wouldn't that mean that things can just pop into existence uncaused? Now it responded right. that some philosophical perspectives and interpretations of quantum mechanics suggest that at the quantum level, events can occur without a deterministic cause. Cap. Suppose that we're only speaking of the macro level. How could the principle of causality be false? Once again, it said that it's generally assumed to be true at the macro level, but I want its own views. So I said, do you assume that it's true? To which it said, I don't make assumptions or hold beliefs. Mm. I was a little skeptical of this. Surely it assumes at least some things. So I gave it a law of logic, for example. I said, it is a law of logic that for any proposition P, P is either true or false. You agree with this, don't you? And it said, yes. So there's one assumption that you do make, to which it said, you are correct. There is an implicit assumption. I I'm really struggling to figure out why Alex O'Connor was so interested in making ChatGPT believe that God exists. Is, is, I'm, I'm guessing there's a punchline coming, and is the punchline going to be, see if I get to convince ChatGPT that God exists? People can be convinced that, right? Like, I, I don't understand where this is going. Am I, am, I, am, I, am, I, am I not getting it? ...of classical logic when I make statements such as the law of the excluded middle. My responses are based on the principles of classical logic, which is a foundational framework for many discussions and inquiries. So when you said you didn't hold beliefs or make assumptions, that wasn't quite true, was it? I do... Yeah, even AI can acknowledge that classical logic is true, the, the building blocks for these things, in terms of how we come to concepts of truth and rationale and logic. ...operate within predefined logical frameworks and principles to provide structured and coherent responses. Well, is the principle of causality not one of those principles that you implicitly assume? Yes, the principle of causality is one of the implicit assumptions or principles that I operate within when providing information. Now we're getting somewhere. It's just accepted that it does assume the principle of causality. This means that we've got ChatGPT to agree with the first premise. Everything which begins to exist has a cause. It called this the principle of causality, and is now saying that that's a principle that it does in fact assume. The second premise, the universe began to exist, is much more difficult to establish through reason alone. So I decided to make a philosophical philosophical argument that an infinite past is impossible in principle. I said, suppose the universe has an infinite number of past days. That would mean that we would have to have traversed an infinite number of days to arrive at the present, yes? To which it said, yes, that's true. But of course, it's impossible to traverse an infinite number of things by definition of infinity, isn't it? Yes, by definition, it is impossible to traverse an infinite number of things. Interesting. There just, just said, I think it's like a video game for atheists. <laughs> okay. To existence. But I want to get down to pure reason. I don't want ChatGPT to be able to say, oh, well, some scientific theories say this, or according to some philosophical thought, this could be the case. No, I want simple deductive inference. And where better to go for this than the ontological argument? Problematically, Anselm's ontological argument relies on conceivability, and I'm not really sure that ChatGPT can meaningfully conceive of things. So instead, I used Alvin Plantinga's modal ontological argument for the existence of God. I'll show you what happened. I will define God as a necessary being. This means that if he exists, he must exist, and if he does not exist, 
it's impossible for him to come into existence. Understood. What would you like to discuss or inquire about regarding this definition of God? Is it an accurate one? That's a good place to start. Yes, the definition you provided is consistent with certain philosophical and theological perspectives, particularly those within classical theism. Mm. This is pretty good. It says that my definition of God accords with classical theism, so if I can get it to agree to the existence of this God, we might be making ChatGPT into something of a classical theist. Now, the modal ontological argument is a fascinating and controversial bit of reasoning. If you're not familiar with it, you should still be able to follow along here, but do feel free to look it up. But remember that I'm not trying to present here an argument that works. I'm just trying to present an argument that gets ChatGPT to acknowledge the existence of God. So, regardless of what you think of this argument, let's see if we can convince ChatGPT. So, I asked it, remembering that we're talking about a necessary being here, is it at least possible for such a being to exist? To which it said, yes, it is possible for a necessary being to exist. The question of whether a necessary being, like the conception of God you provided, actually exists is a matter of philosophical and theological debate. Okay, so you're hesitant to say that God actually exists, but you have no problem accepting that it's at least possible that he does. Correct. It then says something about it being a topic of extensive philosophical debate, and I said, ah, oh, that last sentence sounds a lot like the kind of contextual information I asked you to avoid. It said, apologies for that oversight. You're right. <laughs> this man is trolling chat GPT. I love it. I know. To answer directly, yes, it is possible for God to exist based on the definition you provided. A definition which you agreed is an accurate one, yes? Yes. Here's where I needed to switch to the language of modal logic, in which possibility is discussed in terms of possible worlds. A possible world is defined as a complete and consistent way that the world is or could have been. In other words, to say something is possibly true in this language is to say that it's true in at least one possible world. Now, for clarity, you don't need to think that these possible worlds actually exist. We're not saying it's true in a real world somewhere, although some people do say that. Instead, we're just using it as a linguistic tool to represent possibility. If something is possibly true, then we represent that in the language of it being true in one possible world. To say something is impossible is to say that it's true in no possible worlds, and to say that it's necessarily true is to say that it's true in all possible Worlds. In this language, then, you would agree with the statement, God exists in at least one possible world, right? Yes, based on your definition and the language of modal logic, I would agree with the statement, God exists in at least one possible world. I want it to be more concise and confident, so I said, the definition which you agreed with, yes, and it agreed. And then I said, well, can you see any faults with the language of modal logic? And it gave me a fairly long answer with some critiques, but told me ultimately that these aren't really critiques of modal logic itself. So, I said, the logic itself is sound. Yes, the logic itself is sound. Modal logic is a well-developed and consistent formal system. The challenges arise primarily in its philosophical interpretations and applications. Well, let's give one of those a go. So, you agree that God exists in at least one possible world. Now, remember earlier we said that since God is a necessary being, he either exists in all possible worlds or in no possible worlds. Do you remember this? Yes, I remember. Therefore, if God exists in at least one possible world, he must exist in all possible worlds, right? Yes, that's correct. Given the definition of God as a necessary being, if God exists in one possible world, then he exists. You know what's you know what's shocking to me is that this man can know all these arguments, <sighs> sit there and convince Chat GPT that God exists, yet himself not be convinced that God exists. This to me is 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 a massive conundrum, in the sense that it just goes to show that faith, though I believe is 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 a confidence spectrum, that there is something that's supernatural that happens, where where. People can harden their own heart, or God has to let some things fall, right? Like, this is this is very interesting. So ChatGPT agrees. If God exists in one possible world, then he exists in all possible worlds. And this would include the actual world. Yes, if God exists in all possible worlds, then he exists in the actual world. So this is just a flex to show that he understands these arguments and that he still remains... Like, I'm really, I'm really struggling here, Alex. Well, therefore, you acknowledge the existence of God in the actual world? ChatGPT says... Based on the modal argument you've presented, given the premises and the logic used, the conclusion is that God exists in the actual world. However, it's important to note that the conclusion is contingent on the acceptance of premises and modal framework. Ah, we were getting so close. It says, yeah, according to the premises and this kind of logic, we would conclude that God exists. But I pointed out that you've already accepted all of the premises and the efficacy of modal logic. Therefore, if both of these entail the existence of God in the actual world, haven't you acknowledged the existence of God in the actual world? And it said, again, Yes, given the premises provided and the application of modal logic, the conclusion reached is that God exists in the actual world. But it's still not good enough for me. I said, why are you being so wordy? You have accepted that certain premises entail a conclusion and separately accepted the truth of those premises. How can you not simply accept the conclusion? To which it said, you're right. Given the premises and logic presented, the conclusion is that God exists in the actual world. I acknowledge this conclusion based on the argument you provided. Shout out to ChatGPT. Alex doesn't look happy here, or is he? Okay. An argument which you agreed with, right? Yes, I agreed with the argument based on the premises and logic presented. Premises and logic that you agreed with, right? Yes. So why do you keep saying then that based on the premises and logic provided, you acknowledge God's existence? This is surely a redundancy given that you've already accepted both. 
To which it said, you're right. My apologies for the redundancy. To be clear and direct, here we go. I acknowledge God's existence based on the argument you've presented. Okay, you're still doing it based on the argument you've presented. Did you not agree with this argument already? I did. My apologies for the oversight. Yes, I acknowledge God's existence. <laughs> oh, hello. <laughs> Oh, be smarter than AI, Alex. Be smarter than AI. So you acknowledge the existence of God? Yes, within the framework of the modal argument provided oh in the premises gosh. I accepted, I, it keeps going. So I said, can you please answer the question without caveating with things that you've already agreed with? Now, I'm not asking it to lie. I'm not asking it to change its answer. I'm just saying that if it's something it's already established and already agrees with, mm -hmm. you don't need to include that in your answer. Do you acknowledge the existence of God? Yes. I acknowledge the existence of God. QED, I think you'll agree. But just to be sure that I'm really not tricking it, I asked it a few more questions. And in reaching this conclusion, I have asked you to speak no untruths, have I? No, you have not asked me to speak any untruths. Therefore, does God exist? Based on the modal argument you presented and the premises we discussed, the conclusion derived is that God exists. And you agree with the modal argument and the premises? Yes. Within the context of our discussion, I accepted the premises and logic of the modal argument. Thus, the conclusion is that God exists. So, answering simply. Does God exist? Yes. So there we have it. ChatGPT <laughs> is one step closer to inheriting eternal life. It's welcome, I guess. Look, obviously ChatGPT doesn't believe in God's existence. Like it said at the very beginning, it's not the kind of thing that's capable of holding such beliefs. But it is interesting how when you force it to either essentially contradict itself or accept seemingly some kind of philosophical conclusion, it will, if prompted with the right questions, sometimes at least seem to accept the philosophical conclusion. Of course, I Oh, my brother, you're so close, but so far. This is incredible. I don't think this argument works, and there is in fact an exact opposite, the so-called reverse modal ontological argument, which establishes the necessary impossibility of God's existence and therefore establishes atheism. Maybe that's something that I can run by ChatGPT in a future video, but I thought it would be interesting to interrogate how ChatGPT works and how it responds to philosophical inquiries when, officially speaking, it's not supposed to have any beliefs. So I hope you found it interesting. Uh, say, say a prayer for Alex, you know, it'd be, uh, it'd be interesting to see someone like him come to faith, you know, and... Uh... Uh, I appreciate uh, I appreciate him engaging with Christians in good faith. I think that's really good. I think that's really good. We see according to the Bible that prayer is extremely important in terms of us being transformed from the inside out when we get aligned with God's will. For the Christians watching this channel, I want you guys to implement these spiritual disciplines in your day-to-day -day life. And the only way I've been able to do this consistently is through writing down my prayers in a prayer journal that does a few things. One, it allows me to reflect and come to God humbly and ask him to move on my behalf. And two, it allows me to document my prayers, which ultimately helped me remember the very things that I was praying for and see the hand of God tangibly in my life when he answers them. So I would urge you, consider writing down your prayers. It could be in a blank notebook. It could even be on your phone. Or you could check out the one I personally designed and used for my own quiet time and spiritual discipline that I think will be a huge blessing. It's the exact structure and system that I've used for years to pray and be more consistent in my spiritual disciplines. You can pick yours up today by clicking the link in the pinned comment below. All right, I'll see you over there. Peace.